An article about this girl making $52,000 with DoorDash in four years has recently come out. And I think it's unfair of people to put articles out like this without giving the full truth. So in this video, I'm going to be exposing the full truth about DoorDash and what that $52,000 actually makes her and then reacting to her supposed lucrative side hustle secrets. Now the side hustle secrets or the tips that she gives, they may be right, they may be wrong. I haven't really read them yet, but let's break down this $52,000 worth of income that she made. So basically in the article, it talks about how she had all this debt and didn't know what to do. So she started doing DoorDash to pay off her debt. She had like $110,000 worth of debt. And it says that Leslie's DoorDash earnings were $52,445.11. Now the reason I don't like them putting this article out is because that is nowhere near how much she actually made from DoorDash. When it comes to DoorDash, as we probably all know, unless you're a brand new dasher, there are so many expenses that come along with being a DoorDash driver. So when the headline is, she paid off $52,000 in debt by delivering for DoorDash, that's probably not even true because if she made 52,000 in gross income from DoorDash, there's no way she took home that amount. So what I'm going to do is plug her number of $52,445 into my DoorDash profit calculator. $52,445, okay. I'm assuming she probably averaged around $25 an hour. Let's just say that. So that means she worked 2,000 97 hours to make that amount of money. Let's just say that if you're making $25 an hour, you're probably averaging about $1.50 per mile. So we're just estimating, but let's say she drove about 35,000 miles. So her gas expense alone would have been $5,950, roughly. These are all rough estimates because I don't know the exact car she was driving or how expensive the gas is in the area that she's delivering in, but these are just estimates. So $5,950, almost $6,000 worth in gas expense. And then just for car repairs or even a car savings for her future would be $2,622.25. That's a total of $8,572 worth of expenses. So already we're down to $43,872 that she has left over but that doesn't really include taxes. Now again, I don't know what state she lives in, so this is just based off of my state of Utah. And so once again, just bear with me, these aren't exact numbers, but because she drove those 35,000 miles, then she would get a $21,875 tax deduction roughly, because the amount you can deduct every single year kind of changes a little bit. But again, these are just rough numbers. So that means her taxable income is $30,570, which means she owes $9,171 in taxes. That means that after her gas expense, car repairs, all that good stuff, and taxes, she only actually made $34,701.75. So nowhere near the 52,000 like this article is portraying. And that's what bugs me is because people probably look up DoorDash and wanna see like, oh, how much could I make from this side hustle? Oh, $52,000 in four years, that's not bad at all. But in reality, this is the truth. You make only $34,700 off of that $52,000 that you made. Now again, these are just rough estimates, so it could be a couple thousand dollars more that she pocketed, or maybe it could even be less. So before we get into her tips, I would like to give you my number one tip that actually helps you go over all the stuff we just covered. How much you can expect to make, like she made $52,000. You can see if that's possible in your area, and also how much you're gonna be paying in taxes and expenses and all that. All you have to do is download the Solo app. It has all of those features in the app, and it has some other cool features in there as well. And when you download that app, you're going to get a $10 sign-on bonus when you use the link I have for you down the description. So I would do that first and foremost as just a number one tip. You get $10 for like three minutes of effort and all the tools in there are going to help you make more money as a DoorDash driver. But now let's get into the tips that she talks about in this article. The first tip is to work within a specific time block every day. It says, Leslie says that consistency will help you identify trends in your geographic market. I can agree with that. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good tip. That's a standard tip. I would say that one passes my test. The next tip is identify the 20% of locations or restaurants that generate 80% of the orders, then only work in that location. Mm, that's kind of, that's actually one I've never heard before. Identify 20% of the restaurants that generate 80% of the orders. I guess that means like what specific kind of hotspot in your area generates the most orders and just kind of stay around that area. But I don't know, that wouldn't would be kind of hard to figure out. 
So, I mean, maybe a good tip, but a little bit hard to identify that in my opinion. The next tip is patrol high density areas where busy individuals live and work. Examples include office parks, college campuses, college dorms, student apartments, high-end apartment complexes, hospitals, and airport hotels. I would say that's actually a pretty good tip. I know that the busiest areas, especially during lunch, are like right around business areas. And then high density apartments or like really dense neighborhoods are busier during dinner. So I would say that's actually a pretty good tip. Next one she says is be pleasant, friendly, and courteous when delivering to customers. DoorDash customers usually tip while ordering, but being pleasant might nudge them to increase their tips. Wow. No, that, that one's, I would say, if you are the friendliest, nicest person in the world and do exactly what the customer wants every single time, one out of 200 times, are they going to increase their tip? Maybe. They might give you like a couple extra dollars in cash or something. But I would say it really doesn't matter. Just get orders done as quickly as possible and obviously be nice to the customer, but you don't need to go over the top or anything. Most of the time you don't even have to interact with the customer over text or call or anything. So the last one they give is communicate with your customers while you're in the process of fulfilling their deliveries. Excellent customer service goes a long way toward keeping your ratings up. Again, like, yeah, you want to be communicating with your customer if there's like problems with the order or maybe just telling them like, hey, there's a long wait at this restaurant or, oh, just picked up your food. I'll be there in five minutes. But if you don't communicate with them, your ratings will still probably be high. I mean, I rarely ever text my customers and I have a 4.94 customer rating. So again, I don't really agree with that tip, but it's obviously not gonna hurt you if you do that. So the reason I made this video is because I don't like people getting misconceptions about DoorDash. Because I've been doing this for over four years now, I know that you make a lot less money than what it actually seems like you're making. Like even this past month, I got into two car accidents. I've had three different rental cars that I've had to go through. And there's just so much unpredictability that when DoorDash gets too glorified, I just like to make it known that it's not all glitz and glamour. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you guys subscribe, download the Solo app, and I will see you guys next time. Does anyone else feel like DoorDash probably paid this company to find someone and make this article? I don't know. It just seems way too, like, propagandy almost. Like DoorDash is trying to inflate themselves to try and get people to join and become dashers. Because it's really not as good as this article makes it out to be. I don't know. Just something I thought about. Let me know what you guys think down below.